your body keeps score of these things. Even if you're, you know, young and young and healthy, your body's keeping score and stress, cortisol levels rise and all that, and it's 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 aging, it's damaging to your body, and it suppresses immunity. Girls, a little true. I'd like to know your point of view. Hi everybody, uh, welcome to Evening TV. I'm Evening Ransom. In this time of social distancing, it got me to thinking that we're distanced from everybody else. We're, we're, we're together at homes with with people, and who knows who we're li living with. If you're, uh, you might be living with narcissistic parents. You might have narcissistic roommates. Who knows? And so, if you are in this situation with narcissistic or toxic people, you I might need to practice something I'm calling emotional distancing. What this would be like, if you have, you know, say you have a parent that uses guilt to manipulate you or is overly critical, needs lots of attention, uh, competes with you, makes you responsible for their happiness. And especially, this is the biggest one, you can't be real with them. You can't have any real kinds of conversations. There's no intimacy. You don't feel known, understood. You don't feel like you can have all your emotions. You can't, you're not free to have all of your feelings and you're not free to have all of your needs. It's about their needs and their feelings. What you need to do is basically try and really avoid them as much as possible. And don't engage with them. Don't, it, it's probably really tempting with you getting, you know, in such proximity to get into conflicts. And I just, it's, there, it's pointless. They'll love it. They won't mind it. But it'll be hard on you. And so to stay out of conflicts, you really just need to avoid them or you can really detach from your emotions and also really lower your expectations. Narcissistic parents are really not parents at all. But it's, it's an oxymoron. You can't be really, the qualities that are required to be a parent and the qualities of a narcissist are completely incompatible. You know, parents are supposed to put their child's needs first. They're supposed to have a child because they want to love and and devote themselves to raising a child and they care so much about their feelings and their needs and you know their needs are everything well that's never going to be true for a narcissist a narcissist had children for all the wrong reasons a narcissist had children because of what the child could do for them either they needed to just look they needed to please their parents they needed to look socially acceptable they wanted to um, have a little mini me to do all the things that they didn't do you know all these kinds of things and and there's a couple different types of, especially narcissistic mothers. Um, one seems much more common than the other. One is the very enmeshed, overly controlling, uh, one that doesn't want you to grow up. The other one is just the opposite. The other one is, which is what I experienced, which is a mother who can't wait for you to grow up. You get the feeling that you're constantly trying to earn their love and their approval, that one day you'll arrive at the place where you will have done enough and you'll be the daughter they wanted. They get irritated by you being sick, they get, they get irritated by you crying. They don't want the, they don't want to take care of your needs at all, they resent you for having them. The more emotionally authentic you are, the more it will annoy them. And so that person is the one that's likely to become the scapegoat. You, God forbid, are home in a situation right now where you are being scapegoated in a family or gaslighted mob in a family, that can be really, really tough. If you identify that, if you can identify that that's going on, uh, really the best thing for you to do is really it, utilize internet and talk to friends, get on forums, stuff like that, just to kind of in, have social contact that is away from your family and as much as possible Start detaching your emotions and setting yourself up to lessen your contact with the with the family. And eventually, it'll have to go to a place where you can just really have a sort of a superficial contact with them. I stayed in California and just see, you know talk to them about the weather and a couple of times a year and you know seeing them maybe once every couple of years for a, you know, a brief visit. That would have been fine and for them, and I would probably, I'd still have a relationship with them. I probably wouldn't have ever even really known exactly all the problems that there were. The problems that, that came up for us, which is why we're estranged now, is because I moved up to be near them. I had a family and all that, and then got very, very sick, 
and my husband left me and started having all these problems and really needed them and that was it that my needing them and them not wanting to be there for me and then now my knowing that they couldn't they they just it, it was just we've been estranged ever since not because i wanted to be they had this reaction to my having needs and that now i knew that it was that ended the relationship and so the real big thing with narcissistic parents or really narcissists at all is you can't need them because they will always let you down and if you do need them they might do it in a way that really hurts you so even if you are not even a fully adult yet you need to start kind of pulling back emotionally if you're you know nearing age legal adult age priority has to be your own mental health, your own, you know, really your own health, and that's going to require finding ways to not need your parents, not need this toxic family, because you're going to have some healing to do because you've been used to being in an abusive situation, and it's very, they're very akin to cults, truly. You'll see a better, you'll see it more clearly from a distance. Yes, we're supposed to socially distance ourselves from the outside world. And inside your home, you may have to emotionally distance yourself. If you've got any kind of toxic person, I focus primarily on toxic parents in this video, but if there's also, you have, say you live in an apartment, there's toxic roommates or whatever, you don't care if they love you and all that kind of stuff the same way, so obviously it's a much different relationship, but you still want to, you don't want to, you, don't, you want to detach. You don't want to invest anything of yourself into that person you don't want to disclose anything about yourself to that person because they will use it against you and they will eventually they'll you know there's something they will do if they get jealous of you if they you know because or they start competing with you anything they will turn th anything they know about you around exaggerate it turn it into lies they love gossip all that kind of stuff so don't give them any kind of feel to use against you and recognize their limitations and don't worry about getting them to like you or in this situation and you're locked away in your home with with some toxic people try really hard to excuse yourself to your own room get into a good book do the writing exercises that i that i gave yesterday in my video and that will also be really good for healing some of this trauma of, the, of being raised this way the stress of narcissistic abuse is deadly it's deadly stress some people who watch my channel probably already have heard me say this. I have a near-death experience video on my on my channel. I actually have a playlist of them. But I had a heart attack. I had a heart attack at 33 years old, not a smoker, nothing, and I had a heart attack. And it was purely caused by just heartache. It was just a loveless environment, and I was heartbroken, literally heartbroken. So your body keeps score of these things, even if you're young and healthy. Your body's keeping score and stress, cortisol levels rise and all that, and it's, it's, it's aging, it's damaging to your body, and it suppresses immunity. And we don't want our immunity suppressed right now, so you need to take care of your health and do what you can to boost your immunity. It's deadly in multiple ways. It's deadly because your body fights back. It's deadly because of the things you might do to try and escape it, your own uh, behaviors that you're trying to do to soothe the pain. Doing things to numb numb the pain, try to not feel your feelings. This is the thing that's really hard. We have to go through the feelings, suppressing them all through your childhood. Everyone, everyone does because we have, to, we have to survive. We have to stay with our parents. We have to believe that they love us. We have to believe that we're safe. And so we suppress and we, and we believe them because if this is the cult-like thing. They're like gods to us. They're, we believe everything they say and we're brainwashed. But eventually that starts wearing away. When we grow up, we get judgment. We start getting other outside influences. We start realizing the flaws in what they were doing. And you know, we start to wake up and it's a very, painful, very difficult situation to go through. There's a lot of cognitive dissonance, which leads to depression and a lot of other things too. So a lot goes along with that. There's a lot, a lot coming. And so being around toxic people is really, really challenging. You don't want to come out of this situation with the trauma of being with, with toxic people. So just really try and keep, give yourself, you know, psychic distance from them. You try expressive writing and try things like meditation definitely do a gratitude journal 
those are those are really good exercises to kind of keep your positive vibe up you know when they're if you're around negative people being inside a home with negative people will just sap your energy it's just they're you know emotional vampires and if that's who you're with or if you're with people who just love conflict and are picking on you and you know that's just really really tough so do what you can to save your mental sanity give yourself some emotional distance long hot baths whatever it is but try and give yourself the distance mentally that you can't get physically right now and stay well, you know, stay well. Mm -hmm.